If you all have a Bible, please, we're going back to the book of Hosea. I, I want to uh, spend some time, just a few minutes, just reviewing, and then we're going to move forward. I told you last week that uh, this was my opportunity to uh, just kind of, I've been sitting on this word for a minute, right. for a long time. And I'm excited about it and where it's going. If you haven't heard, we're going to be out uh, for a few days this week. We're going to be down in Daytona Beach. And I'm telling you what, the calendar is full up. So I think I just need to tell you real soon in case you want to travel. I don't know what airline tickets are doing right now, but I'm sure that if you get them early, they might be all right. To all of our family that are still out, we just want to wish you safe travels. To all of our people that are viewing on Facebook live with us this morning, you're in the house of Judah International Ministries. We're excited to be here in the presence of the Lord, and it's been a real rich, rich, rich atmosphere. Amen, amen, amen. So here in the book of Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, come now and let's what? Come now and let's return unto the Lord. Mm-hmm. He will heal us. Mm -hmm. He has smitten and he will bind us up. That's right. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. That's right. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. That's right. His going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. Yeah, that's, that's, that's desperate in my spirit this year. Uh, following on to know the Lord. I want to know him better. I want to know him better. I want to know him more. We extend our condolences to you, uh, Sister uh, Stuart Rita, and your family for the loss of, of, of Jack Price. I hope the family is well. Do you have any information for us? Have they made any arrangements yet? Okay. All right. So let's continue to, to, to pray for them uh, and for all the people that are on our prayer list. Amen. You all ready? So I, I was talking about, and uh, I've been working on our prophetic projections for 22, and this one just kind of stood out. I do believe that 2020, 2022 is going to be the year of the returns. I believe that a lot of us have, have uh, maybe wandered off from some places, the beaten path, right? And uh, in wandering off, unless you've got some real strong people to encourage you, some folk would just let you go on out there, right? They invite you to the out there parties, you know, and you just way out there and you, and you just don't realize how far you've gotten away. Um, Sister uh, uh, Michelle, I don't know what happened with you this week, but it's like uh, there's going to be another report taken that whatever conclusion that they made, they're about to redo it because it's not conclusive. I like when God is the end of the thing. God can recreate stuff. Y'all know that. Yeah. He can do creative miracles whenever he gets ready. So I'm waiting to hear that report concerning you. Does that make sense to you? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I like when folks say that just makes good sense. Amen. All right, so I, I was talking uh, last week from Judges chapter 16 about one of our patriarchs by the name of Samson. I don't know y'all know that story, you know. Uh, Samson was one of those judges that God raised up to bring deliverance to a people. But, but I, I believe sometimes, and I think the pandemic has made a way, you say, why do you keep bringing up? Because even though it's not front lines on the news, yeah. it's very much out there and growing. And it's still infecting and affecting us in ways that we do not realize. And I, and I, and I specifically looked at these individuals because as they were what they called carrying out normal lives, you know, trying to make the best of it, trying to fulfill their call or whatever. We don't realize sometimes that, that when we are away from the press, sometimes the other parts of our makeup take liberties to do some things that we normally would not do. I, 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 I'm trying to speak to y'all. You know, I can, I can get real down and butt ugly and naked, but I think y'all know what I'm talking about. That, that sometimes they're like, come on, Sir Cole. The, uh, I'm sorry, Mayo. <laughs> now, don't y'all be running up and say, hey, Mayo, that's, that's pastoral purge. That's Mayo, and where's dressing? Dressing is with the kids. All right. I got names for everybody. Just hang around long. I'll come up with some. That's right. But I, I, I think we don't realize 
I, I, I'm always reminded of the two sons that were in the father's house. That they just didn't realize how vulnerable they were to certain things until they kind of got away or got, got from underneath the pressure. Any of y'all had one of those uh, supervisors that was, is what I call, they were micromanagers. And you just couldn't wait for them to leave the room or leave the space. And then, and then you said, whew, let me, let me work on this. Right? And, and, and sometimes we didn't realize that the micromanager was keeping us on task. As ugly and nasty as they were, they kept us on point. They kept us on task. They kept us what we call alert, right? <coughs> and the moment we kind of slipped or veered, it's like the door got open. I'm reminded what the Lord said to Cain. Cain, if you do good, you're going to be accepted. But if you choose not to do good, there's a door. And evil is at the door. And it doesn't take much to turn the knob. I just, I just want to talk to real saints that I find myself playing with a knob, right? And sometimes crack the door open a little bit, say, hmm, hmm. And I said, now, why did I do that? Because I thought I was strong. Not strong, 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 strong. So I believe that that's, that's what Samson did. Samson kept playing with this grace that was upon his life, wow. right? He kept playing with it. He kept playing with it. And, and as much as the story is kind of focused on his hair, the power of his strength was this covenant relationship that he had with God. So we may go out and do stuff, but, but the power behind what we do and what we don't do is not the act. God never gets caught up in the act of what we do. It's what it's speaking about the covenant relationship. So we do stuff as if God is not watching. Well, God, he, I mean, he busy. I mean, all the mother folk he's saying about, you know, he, he's not paying attention to this. Yes, he is. In Judges chapter 16, all right, uh, I believe it's verse, try 19, I think is where I want to be. And I'm, and I'm getting there. Judges 16, 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. Uh-oh. And see, and see. Just the prophetic language of this just bothers me. Now, when we think of knees, you automatically think of anybody? Prayer. Huh? Prayer, Prayer or submission. submission. So Delilah had worked Samson into a place of submission, but he don't, he don't think so. <laughs> you ever heard people, I ever seen people to just mess with you in a way and then make you think what they want you to do is your idea? Y'all not. I mean, so imagine Delilah just working on him, working on him, and she's playing with his emotions because he's upset. Listen, when you're already emotionally pulled and drained, people will talk you into stuff you never thought of. I, I'm talking to somebody. You see, y'all don't, don't want to hear me. Huh? The, remember the, the parable that Jesus gave about the unjust judge and the woman that kept coming to him saying, avenge me of my adversary? And the Bible said that after a while, she just wore him out. And he finally just said, whatever you want me to do. See, that, that is that other nature in you. If you open the door to it, it will wear you out until you crack that door. Right? And you say, well, well I didn't go very far. I just cracked the door. Just wait till next time. See, the door is already open. I'm not, I can't hear nobody up in here. My father-in-law said, you can't hear nobody pray. I said, no, they ain't praying right now. They're trying to crack the door. <laughs> and she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for what? A man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, uh -huh. and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. That's right. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times uh -oh. before. Oh, right there. Now, what, what's up with the hair? Why, why was the hair so important? I, I imagine, as old as he was by this time, the hair must have been dragging the floor. Right? Dreads had nothing on Samson at this point. All right? So, so, so what's, what's up with the hair? The hair is connected to a vow. Right? A vow that the angel made or that his mother made with God saying that no razor, because he was a Nazarite, no razor shall come upon his head all the days of his life. All right? But, 
Understand, it really wasn't the hair. It was the pledge of the promise behind the hair. How many of you ever told God, I'm going to stop that? And then start it again. And then went back to God and didn't even bring it up as if, well, you know. <laughs> and God is just waiting for you to say, you know, that thing that I said I was going to stop, I did it again. Right? And your buddies will say, well, how many times did you do it? <laughs> and God said, it's not about the number of times you did it. It's where your mind was as you kept contemplating if you could get away with it. Ah. So, so Samson gets up <clears throat> and he says to himself, what? And I will go out as other times before and mm -hmm. shake myself. N not realizing that the, the, the over time that playing with this thing has made you vulnerable. And he gets up and he, and he does what? Just, just shake. As if, as long as you've been playing with the idea, you can just brush it off right away. And you've been contemplating, well, we've been contemplating this thing for months and months and months. Now, months and months and months of contemplation is not going to go away just because you kind of shake it off. It's in there. Take your name. It's in there. Sin is, sin is not conceived when you do it. It's conceived with the thought. So the thought's been growing and incubating in there for a long time. And you just can't shake that off. But the Bible said, and this is, this, is, this is what's interesting. He didn't know that what? The, the rest Lord, of that. And he knew it's not that the Lord was departed from him. Have you ever tested how strong you were? Why is the cyclone is the only one talking loud up here? <laughs> I mean, have you ever just said, oh, I can, I can do this and this will be all right. Right? I can hang around all of this. I'm going to be great and still be anointed. Right? Well, it didn't work. Right? It didn't work. So, one, I've got to recognize that when I contemplate a thing or when I play with a thing for weeks, for years, for months, that that thing is somehow going to get down into my spirit and it's going to affect the strength of the grace of God that's upon me. Now, does God remove his grace? I don't believe God removes his grace. You just get desensitized to it. Okay, you didn't like that. Okay, I think I need to move on. John 21, this is, we talked a little bit about this last week. <clears throat> that after the death of Jesus Christ, Peter wants to go back and pick up his gig. Elder Brown, you missed this, because uh, you and I have been in conversation about my gigs that I'm going to pick up. And I'm going to sit at home. And they're going to pay me and send me a check to sit at home. Y'all in agreement with that? Okay, other than I would probably die sitting at home. That's right. Uh, because the gig is not going to work. Right? Uh, so John 21 and 3, uh, Peter says, uh, Simon Peter saith unto them, mm -hmm. I go a fishing. Mm -hmm. They say it unto him, we also go with thee. See, see did anybody kind of, when the COVID hit, said, what am I going to do now? Some of us got laid off, or some of us, they, they cut back on our hours, yes. or told us not to come, don't be here in person, and then you found yourself at home being able to do what they were paying you eight hours to do, a couple of hours. Yes. What am I going to do now? Yes. What, what, what did you do? <laughs> okay, Cyclone, he's my talk back, I got a talk back today. Somebody asked, what, what did we do for those extra hours that were in our day? Television, yes. Netflix, yes. caught up on all your series, yes. right? Yes. Caught, on, caught up on some housework. Yes. Huh? Basement. The basement. Anybody else? Yes. Right? Well, did, was any of that extra time filled with more of God? Yes. Why is Cyclone the only one giving commentary this morning? I appreciate it. Anyone else other than Cyclone? Anybody, anybody else say, uh, huh? Did we say, those six extra hours I have, let me read the word. Let me pray for the saints of God. Huh? Let me really intercede for all the people 
that I know really need Jesus. Not for six hours every day, we did not. No. Right? So something got compromised. Peter's going back to his gig, and he's out there fishing all night, and the moment he realized in all of his years of experience as a fisher, fisherman, nothing was in the net, something's wrong with this picture. Huh? And, and not that he couldn't fish anymore, but the grace on his fishing gig was over. See, there's some things you just can't do because you're not graced to be back in that place no more. Y'all, y'all not feeling. There, there's, there's just certain things. You hear me talk about my closet. I was looking in my closet. I desperately need to move my spring summer gear out of my closet. I don't have room to put my fall winter stuff up in there. Right? So I'm finding myself tinging over to somebody else's closet. And it, and it might get lost up in her closet. Okay, so I desperately need to move. And while I'm going through, I said, oh, I haven't had that on all summer. Right? And then I said, and why haven't you had that on all summer? And I say, my mind says, well, I just didn't have opportunity to put it on. I wasn't going anywhere. COVID was here. There's no point in putting that on. Right. But COVID has been around what? In this piece that I'm talking about, I had for five. Huh? And some of it is still in the original, original plastic bag that I bought it at, at the store. With the tag. You say, well, you should sew it. I haven't found anybody in the earth. They're worthy to open up the bag and loose the seals there. <laughs> You hear how I could just work those scriptures to just justify it? You know, so, 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 so something's wrong with this picture. And maybe the Lord is saying, maybe you just need to move some stuff out of the way. Right? And it's not that it's not nice stuff. It's just not the season for me to put that on. But something, something just keeps telling me, like the, the, the psalm is sung today, maybe late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to wear in my favor. <laughs> it's not going to work. Right? And I should just move it, right? So why am I so stubborn? Something in that inner part of me says, oh, we're going to make this happen. Huh? I still have platform shoes. Huh? Because we 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 gonna have kind of kind of some kind of festive here, and we gonna do a rollback, and you know they're gonna be hard to find on the internet. So I just yeah. some just say you just need to hold on memorabilia. Come on, y'all got some memorabilia yeah. from the day, from the day. Right. Now the day could have been last week, but I'm gonna say it's the day, right. right? I've got some other stuff from back of the day, and those those are reminders of a life. That I, I'm never going to walk through that stage of my life again. So why do I keep holding on to those things? Well, they're for my children's children. <laughs> Show and tell for Christian and Johnny and David. Like, Papa, what you going to do? Did you break your leg and knees? What, is this a cast or something? You know. So, so why, why do we hold on to those things? Maybe because we're not completely over. Hmm. So he goes back. Fishing gets not the work. Jesus is on the shore. But they don't recognize him. So I think during COVID, some of us try to pick up some old habits. And they don't work for us any longer. Right? Okay. Y'all got quiet on that one. Okay. We're at Luke 24. Did you notice that your conversation changed for the, over the last two years? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Right? So I have this little contest with my father-in-law. I try to match his conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say it too. 
and I know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, and I call it leveling. I said, oh, you want to throw some stones, how you use some stuff. The good deacon, let me show you what the good preacher can say. So, so we, we, we have these things, and sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's, I can really work this thing. Put him in his place real good. He ain't going to remember five minutes from now, so I can get away with it. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible? Well, I had, I, I've had worse thoughts than that. That's a mild one on a good day, but I've had some other thoughts, right? Hmm, hmm, hmm. So Jesus, Jesus rose up on these disciples in Luke 24, and they, are, they just have a conversation that's just really hindering them from seeing the blessing of the Lord. I, I've been in some conversations with some individuals, and everything is, I call them, sad, you see. Huh? Everything is sad. That whole conversation is sad. How you doing? Terrible. Would the Lord speak to you? Nothing. How you been surviving the COVID? Heaven. Be glad when this is over, but it ain't going to be over anytime soon. So, I mean, it's just on and on. And when you listen to it, you're like just thoroughly depressed. Everything is negative. I said, you sound like the Sadducee. Everything is sad. Sad, sad, sad. Right. right? You didn't used to talk that way. Is there anything positive going on? You're still here. Yeah, it's sad. Huh? I mean, I mean, some of that is the throes of what I call the residue uh, of this thing that's going on, and, 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 I, and I know some people that have not had the virus, but you got the symptoms. You have, you have all the negative throwback, the residue of the symptoms, and you don't realize it, but we're listening to it in your conversation. And their conversation is hindering them from recognizing Jesus, right? So it's not until they talk to work. In, the, in, this, in this last two years, it, it's really critical if you're going to make it. You've got to get around some people who know how to talk to word. All right. Know how to revive you. Know how, know how to speak to your situation. All right. Know how to resurrect you. I mean, I was down in, in Jackson. I was getting ready to talk to, to the elders that just got installed. And the Lord used the word on me. He said, pollute it. I said, pollute it. I mean, I'm going into a meeting to talk to some, some leaders. They don't want to hear the word polluted. You don't want to use that kind of word, I mean, right? And the Lord said, well, we don't discern that we have lost life during the pandemic. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Ezekiel said God saw us polluted in our own blood. And nobody pitied us. I want to ask you, do you recognize I picked up some stuff? Okay, didn't like that either. All right, let's go to this verse in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 2.13. You there? Do y'all see me keep pulling these glasses on and off? They irritate me. I don't know why I just don't leave them off other than I might really say something that's not in there. 13. For my people have committed two evils. Tell your neighbor, at least two. <laughs> two. They it have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Did we consciously do that? God, I'm, I'm busy. We, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to church when all this is over. And hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. All right, let, 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 let's not go to the big one, but let's say it. We've left the fountains of living water. Over the last two years, I have digressed in some stuff. Right? So where God would be the center, the focus, the attention, my energy, my desire, my press, not pressing as much. And it was easy to do when I didn't see you. Right? Because being around you kind of makes us all, I, I got to do better, be better. I mean, at least look the part. But if I don't have to see you, I don't have to talk to you, I don't have to be around you, right? Especially when we ain't got Wednesday service. I can coast from Monday to Saturday. Right. Come on, y'all act like it's not easy to do, right? But understand what, what, what Jeremiah is prophesying, that whatever we left, 
It's not open. It's not uh, a decrease. We've had to fill it back with something else. And what Jeremiah said, we've hewed out something in place of the living water called a cistern, our own well. But it's broken, and it's leaking life, and we don't realize it. All right. So, so honestly, you don't, you don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to answer. Have I unconsciously replaced God or my time with him or my time with you with something else? They go, they go to commentary again. I did. It was called Flash. Yeah, Flash. The Marvel comic, Flash. <laughs> Flash was a bad dude. Y'all, y'all that film. Netflix. Huh? That's your favorite action? Well, I moved from Flash to What If? Y'all don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. How long they been running Christmas stories on Hallmark? How long? No, 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 no. no. All right, LZ, let me ask some of the people. Hallmark fans, where are you at? How long have they been running the Christmas specials? I think they started in July. Okay. But, they, but they're running them consistently now. How many are a fan? You know, it takes a whole lot of time to watch all them long, hard, see. <laughs> How many you got? Your mom's got 30 recorded. Mm-mm-mm. See, my, my thing with this, they're better, but they have been so predictable. I said, I know where this is going. Why are you watching this? I can tell you what's going to happen. I don't even have to use my gift to tell you what's going to happen next. Right? But it's just something about them. That's time. Time spent away from something else. Right? So imagine time spent away from really what might be important to watching a flick. And you don't, you don't watch flick moving. Or you do? Y'all moving, walking while y'all watching a flick? Or are you sitting down? Do snacks come? More snacks, a lot of snacks. Before you realize, especially if you're binging, you don't eat everything. And then you look back in your closet and you pull it up on your body and your body says, mm-mm, this ain't, this, ain't, this, this ain't going nowhere. And then you wonder, how did this happen? You know, when I'm feeling decreased, something has enlarged. Right. Now, who are we going to blame for that? We got a whole lot of commentary in the room, right? Don't worry, I'm going to make an altar call. It might be one person on the altar, but we're going to get to it. Right? So, 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 so I don't think we, we, we thought about that. We were just going to watch the show and keep watching and keep watching and binge watching and binge watching. It was easy at the beginning of COVID, you know, because we weren't supposed to come to church. Right? Some of us did, but I still watch Flash. <laughs> right? I mean, I'd get up, and my, my hours, like probably like a lot of the intercessors in the room, night is just jacked up anyway. You're up all hours of the night. So I get it, read my scripture, do my prayer, and I'm still away. What am I going to do next? Flash. He said, but you're going to wake everybody up. Well, they got, me some, they got me some earphones. I can put them on, and the only one listening is me. I can crank it up as loud as I want. Right? Now, you know you're not going to get up at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning, go down to the kitchen, fix your full-blown sandwich. You're going to grab something quick. It's going to be some chips, some pretzels, something like that, right? And you're not just going to eat like Lay's potato chips. You can't just eat one. You got to kill the bag, right? Then when it's time to get up, everybody else is up. It's time to get your day going, and you're exhausted. Not from your prayer time and scripture time. You, you, you exhausted from Flash. <laughs> right? Am, am I right about this? 
I, I mean, and, 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 then, and then you keep going and you don't realize that's a deviation from what you normally would do. But why is it all right? Because somewhere in the accountability process, you've lost touch with the grace. Okay, so what's the broken cistern? What, what, is, what is mine? What, what well have I dug that's leaking? Now, if it was just gushing out, you say, oh, this ain't going to work. Right? So uh, I was in the kitchen yesterday. And I was cutting up some potatoes to do some fried potatoes in there. I'm deliberately trying to make you hungry just to see how far you're going to get to the rest of the meal. Right. And I don't know what, I don't know, you know, improvisers. So when I looked at the item, it was the lid of a cake topper. Right? And it sits flat because the handle folds down inside the cake topper. You know what I'm talking about? So I said, okay, I'll just use that. Since I had so many potatoes because I'm cooking for so many, I'll just dice them up and put them in there. Put some water in it, let them sit till I get my grease hot and stuff. Y'all know what I'm saying. And I just went on about getting my grease cut, get my onions cut. Are y'all getting hungry yet? Yes. Like a lot of onions in my potatoes. A little garlic salt, a little pepper, a little hot, hot pepper flakes. Cut them real thin, they cook faster put bacon grease down in the bottom. Yes. Cover them up. Let the steam cook them. Then you rise, slay, and eat. I didn't notice, but my grandson came and said, what's all this water doing on the floor? I said, I didn't throw that down there. Well, the topper was leaking. It was a slow leak. I didn't notice it. Somebody else recognized. Maybe you need to ask the person next to you, is it a slow leak? Huh? That over time, you keep deteriorating, deteriorating, keep deteriorating. You don't recognize it because it's not a gusher, it's just a drip. Are we in the room yet? All right. Why is this Im 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 important to us? Well, I want to take you to where we ended last week. We were at uh, the, uh, Revelations chapter 3, and we're talking about the church of Laodicea. Okay. The church of Laodicea has gone so far away from God that he has to knock back on the door to get back in. Now, you're talking about the influence of seven church periods or what we call dispensations before we get to Laodicea. So the first church in Revelation chapter 2 is Ephesus. The Lord says to Ephesus, now this is the church that Paul was able to give all this deep revelation to. He said, now, you've left your first love. So by the time we get from Ephesus down to Laodicea, you can imagine what the residue is in the church that they're so numb to the lack of anointing, that they still just have in church without it. Now, the reason why I want to just kind of pause here is because I believe that as a house, as a ministry, as a church, God has given us real specific opportunity and access to be doorkeepers for so many. Amen. Right? I mean, there is something that God does in the midst of our corporate gathering that usher, ushers people into his presence like Nowhere have I experienced before. Any witnesses to that said, I know that's the truth, right? Now then, as doorkeepers, you know that some of this drip shuts the door. That some of what's oozing out of us or are flowing out of us that's not connected to the living fountain is actually narrowing the entrance for people to get to God through us. Y'all not feeling me. Okay, well, look at Laodicea, Revelations chapter 3. Who's he talking to? First, he's talking to the angel of the church. He's talking to the gatekeeper. He's talking to those individuals that are there at the door doing the ushering. So he's telling them, gatekeepers, I'm standing at your door knocking, and you won't open up the door and let me in. Well, why not? Because you got some other doors open. 
Uh oh. Right? All right, let me get this. John 10. Hold your thought, John 10. I'm going to keep these glasses on because they're getting on my nerves. So I'll just leave them on for a while. John 10. How's our time? Good. Good. John 10. All right. Verse 2. It says what? But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. That's right. All right. Is that a good word? Yes. That's what Jesus said, right? Now look at verse 9 of same chapter. I am the door. That's right. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Are you a door? I'm talking to the people. Are we doors? Yes. People should be able to come in and out, right? And do what? Find pasture. All right. Look at Matthew 23 and verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Right. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. What do they do? You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Then he tells them why. For, For you, you what? Go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are in that are entering to go in. All right, so let's go back two years. In that two-year period, did I go in like I usually do? Was I aggressive about going in like I normally would? When I found myself away from the rest of you all, did I go in at all? Well, not that door, but I hit some others. Right? Is there any room in that to say, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. All right. So in that moment, when I chose not to go in, nobody else could get in either. Right. See, I don't know if we just think we're the door when we're in church. Huh? <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm the door in the church at a conference. But outside of that, I'm a barred gate. You better not even come there. I think you're going to get through up in here. Anybody got time for that? Right? So why, why, why would Jesus say this? Because as gatekeepers and doorkeepers, my ability to usher people in is connected to my frequent stay on the other side of that door. Are you with me? Okay, so, so why is he talking to Laodicea? Because something has happened in them that they don't realize that in some aspects of their life the door does not swing open as freely. You with me? Well, how does that happen? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to use this word today. It's probably going to upset you a little bit, so I make this disclaimer now. You will be better. So whatever does not fill our heart in totality gives room for something else too. All right? Acts chapter 5. We're going to talk about Ananias and Sapphira for a moment. The biggest church scandal on record. Huh? Now, what's the story about? Come on, we got some people. What's the real story about? What happened? The Bible commentary again. Because they didn't give away. They didn't want to give away anyway. They held on to something. Right? Was that a problem? Yeah. It wasn't a problem. They could have kept whatever they wanted. Right, yeah. They lied. They lied. Well, don't that happen every time we come to church? <laughs> I give myself away. I'm going to take this back, though. Don't, don't we lie all the time? All right. We mean it when we say it, but in our actions, we take some of that back. So they lied. But that's not what Peter said. He said, why has Satan filled your heart? To me, that suggests something else. That it, something was going on in their spirit 
long before they got to this transaction about the property and how much they were going to bring to the church, something had crept in and they were not aware that when, when, when we give the enemy room, he's just not going to stay in the back room and just party with us on Saturday and said, go to church on Sunday, act up, sing all the songs, be good, look spiritual. No, I don't. He wants to take over the whole house. Okay? So they gave room to something, and what they gave room to finally took over their heart. Maybe that's what we don't realize, that we just can't pack this thing over in the corner and think it's going to stay because we got some power and authority. Right? Okay. So, so I, I'm thinking about room we give. Uh, Proverbs says, keep, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Well, what if we don't know what's really in abundance in here? Well, how do I know? Well, the Bible says, whatever's in abundance in my heart is going to what's come out of my mouth. Have you ever taped what you've been saying lately? That's, what you're gonna, that's when you're going to find out what's really down in there. Right. Ask somebody next to Julie, ask, your, ask Elder Brown. <laughs> Said, I'm going to tell you what your conversation is like most of the day. And it's an indicator of what's really in abundance. Chicken. <laughs> See, he can name it, and he can tell you where they are <laughs> and how long it's going to take him to get there because that's a treasure. <laughs> I was a Popeye fan yeah. till I ate that hot Louisiana chicken sandwich. <laughs> Woo, I prayed all the way home. Get me there. <laughs> <laughs> I could hear Tita say, release, <laughs> release. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. But my system... Right now, just can't do that hot stuff. But that was on a whole nother level. It was hot like, what possessed me to think I could eat this sandwich? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Huh? And I, and I, and I was hearing voices all along. Don't get that sandwich. And some of me, I'm going to get this sandwich. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to enjoy it. But you don't eat it in the car when you're too far away from the throne. <laughs> Some things you just ought to know by now. But it kept me. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> God in the house, don't talk to me, don't ask me nothing. I'm on an assignment. <laughs> Y'all don't feel me yet. Something got on me. Woo, I couldn't wait for it to come to pass. Y'all not feeling me. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Right? So, what's really in abundance? And so you've got to ask, you've got to ask some people. Say, uh, I talk to you, and I don't know what we talk about. The conversation always goes back to here, which tells me this is really what's on your mind most of the time. Huh? Right? How do I change that? Well, when Jesus talks to the church of Ephesus, he says, you've got to remember where you have fallen from. But you're still in denial you fell at all. <laughs> so we can't fix it till we get you out of denial. You with me? Okay, I'm going somewhere. Well, well what, 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 what do you mean like this? When, when we were right on the threshold of some, what we thought, major manifestations of some promises that God had made to us. Remember? I mean, we was working on, we were working on conference stuff. I mean, we just had these big ideas and plans. All right, not y'all, just I'll say me, since y'all don't want to partake of it. I mean, we were really expecting, really believing that God was going to do some incredible things, and all of a sudden, slam. Somebody shut the book, right? And, and it got worse, it got worse, it got worse, and then it got bad, bad, emotionally bad, like, like this is terrible bad, then election came and it got worse, and then you just lost your appetite for everything, it just got crazy, you would watch television and get depressed all over again, I mean, I don't care who you voted for, my president 
has already been in. So I could care less. But what it did to the church was unbearable. How it divided us. And we're still reeling and rocking from the division that has been caused. Right? And, and on and on and on and on and on. And little did I realize, and, I, and, I, and I'm saying this, in the midst of all that prophetic word, I started questioning, well, maybe God didn't say that at all. Right? Maybe we missed it. Maybe I missed it. I mean, I had people say, hey, weren't you doing prophetic projections? Why didn't you spell this out like that? I said, well, you know, part of me said, for real, you really going to ask me why I didn't spell it? I mean, for real, I got, I got a projection for you. I got a projection. <laughs> Come on, laugh. Laugh is good for our dead. I mean, come on. I, I mean, there, there's a man underneath in here. It's like, oh, no. You want a pro- projection? Oh, you want to throw some stones, huh? I said, I got something for you. I got something. Then I got over that. Then I said, you know what? I prophesy in part. I said, that's a, there was enough in there for us to be aware that something was going to happen. And I said, well, so what? He didn't tell me all of it. I mean, he supposed to know everything. I mean, just because he didn't tell me all of it don't mean the projections are not right. So I had to get over that accusation. Right? It began to work on me, though. So did you say this to anybody? And then I said, well, I recognize that, God, you trusted me with some things, not everything. Right? And then guess what? A four-letter word came. Say it. Say it. The one you use, say it. (laughs) Fear. Did I miss God? Not that word, (laughs) Daryl. Don't say it. Don't. Okay, but that probably wasn't a fair word. Probably not. <laughs> All right, I'm just messing. Come on, let me mess. Okay. Fear. Did I miss God? And if I miss God on that, what else am I not hearing? What else have I missed? And it just wears on you. It wears a, and because we're distant now, you don't have anybody to bounce that off to. Your accountability piece is gone or not in place. You can't touch. You can't. And, and then the enemy just said, drip, 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 drip. And you don't realize it that you're losing life and life. And that one suggestion has created a snowball effect in your life. And now you're questioning everything. Right? So where, 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 where are you getting that from? Well, look at you. We're, we're there, John. My time's still good? I think this is one of the better messages, but y'all not saying that. Thank you. Well, I, I, I like this piece about John because this is right after the fishing gig with all the disciples, and Jesus has a real blunt conversation with Peter about what Peter needs to submit to in his life, right? And Peter misses it. He says, well, uh, uh, let me get a verse for you. Somewhere around verse 18, 15. would you read? 2018? 21, 18? Yep. Uh-huh. Verily, verily, I say unto you, That's right. when you was young, thou girded thyself, and walkest whether thou wouldest, when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, That's right. and another will gird thee, and carry thee whether thou wouldest not. 19. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. All right, so Jesus is trying to give Peter a revelation about what's in his future, what's in his destiny, or really the act. Thank you. What's really in the act? 
what's really, what's really in his future that Peter needs to submit to. I think that's profound. If Jesus would just come and say, Mark, if you just deal with this, man, glory is assigned to you like never before, right? When you want him to have a conversation like that, but he's not having that level of conversation. He just said, will you die to this today? Because we're going to die to something else tomorrow and next week and the month after that. So he just don't give us the whole list because you know we would freak out. All right. So he just gives Peter this part. But Peter is so disfocused, right? Peter turning about and he sees who? Sees whom Jesus loved following. He sees John and? Yeah, yeah. What this man do? I want to know what he has to do. That's typical church folk. They all up in your prophecy. But can't even quote their own. All up, all up, all up in your stuff. All up in your history, all up into your business. Okay, oh, no, 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 no. And Jesus responds to John. Now understand, these words are heavy. Jesus said, if I will that he tarries till I come, what is that to you? So this word, this word, this prophetic word, is hanging over John's life. John, by the time we get to Revelation, John does not know he's been entrusted with the last book. He doesn't know that. Right? Y'all feel me? He, he, he doesn't know that that's in his destiny. He doesn't know that, 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 John, I'm saving you for something big. You just got this word. And the word is not changing any of your day-to-day -day life. And you keep living and you keep moving and you keep going through series of persecution, persecution, persecution. Yet this word is still hanging for you. I would think after a few years, boy, I didn't hear that right. Jesus, Jesus was just trying to make a point to Peter. Wasn't nothing in there for me. Right? Wasn't that what you feel? I mean, I mean, isn't that what you did? And I said, I don't forget about that word you prophesied so many years ago. That ain't going to happen. Right? That ain't going to happen. God don't remember that word. I mean, I don't know what you was eating that day, but that ain't going to come to pass. I mean, as long as you got breath, there's opportunity for the word. But we don't think like that. Because we want God to do it now. Right, yesterday. So by the time John is in position for the word to be manifested, something has crept into John's heart called fear. Right? Fear. Nyla. Fear. Right? So in Revelation chapter 1, so here, here, here is John. He is transported to the day he wished would have happened, the day after Jesus gave the word. Right? That's what we want. And, and he, he's overwhelmed by what he sees. This, and I don't like how this reads. You ready? So John says, verse 17, when I saw him, I fell at his feet. That, as that, that's, that's, stop. When I saw him, something in me just died. See, I'm not talking about a physical death, but in the return, when we really get a chance to look upon him, and we are honest with the fact that we have deviated for some things, something in you and I ought to just surrender. <laughs> you, would, you shouldn't wait for the Lord or the angels to say, holy, 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 or mercy and grace. Something mean, you should, ooh, I need a shot of this right there. And you just need to get down before he says anything else. I'm not, not I'm not, y'all not feeling me. When you, when you realize that you have been away and grace has kept you all the time that you've been away and acting like you haven't been away, when you've been gone, still here but gone, and you see him face to face, and there's no condemnation coming out of him, you just look upon his first and said, oh, I've been waiting for this moment. And guess what Jesus finally says to John? Fear not. So you know what I'm hearing God say? This is what I like about him. No matter what you and I have done right or wrong with the last two years, when you see him, 
Fear not. <laughs> ah! Huh? He can redeem whatever happened over two years. And he wants to. He just wants to get that thing out of your heart that's hindering you from seeing that he's still on the throne. He's still working on our... And it's called fear. Fear will immobilize you. We have been released to go back to some kind of normal, but in our spirit we're still immobilized because we're afraid to get back to that spot when we were hot. All right, y'all didn't like that. Mm-hmm. So here's my couple of words in this prophetic thing. I supposed it was going to happen like this. How does that sound good? I supposed that it was going to happen like this. I would have never, in all my spirituality, counted on a famine to get me to this place. Called on an epidemic. That is crazy that God would use all of this to set me up for right now. Who would do such a thing? Who would, who, 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 who would conspire? Who, who would actually think and conceive such a thing? God, he's done it before. He's going to do it again. Well, why do I struggle with that? Because I don't know the mind or the wisdom of God. It says his ways are, un- his, he is so unsearchable and his ways are past finding out. I have no idea till I see his face why he would do it like this. Right? And what's really being challenged is my confidence that he still is in the midst of what I don't understand. That's what's being challenged. Right? All right. Here's one. I'm going to Acts chapter 7. And then we'll be done, okay? Acts 7. And I, and I will stop. I don't have to? Oh. Well, I'm trying to be sensitive. You trying to get high? Hot. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, well, you can legally get both of them right now if you want to. I know where a couple of stores are, but not because I've been in them. I just drove by them. Something about that teaching around the herbs and the plants just got in me inspired. <laughs> oh, somebody brought me some, was it? Hip lotion? Is that what it is? Cream. Hip cream for my knee? Well, I would have thought I got to contact something through that hip hole. I kept putting it on waiting. <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? Oh, something, is something wrong with me? Oh. Nothing. 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 I, I, I realize that in my in my seat, in my in my line, we have a high tolerance for a whole lot of stuff. Pain, hemp, stuff. <laughs> so uh, when I went to the doctor about, you know, this side of me, he says, Well, what do you want? Instead of this, 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 this. How's it working? I said, I, I had to take so much of that stuff to even feel anything. I just refused to take all that stuff. I'm not going to take all that stuff. I'm just not going to. You hear me looking crazy. You know, take five of this and six of it. No, I, I, don't t- I don't like taking stuff to begin with, let alone this. Right? And I'm up, I'm up before folk. I be saying stuff. I'm not supposed to be saying, no. <laughs> not going to happen. He says, uh, this was just the last week. And <laughs> why you wait so long to come to me? I said, I told you when I was here in 2019, I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> not you personally, but I don't want to come and see people like you. Why? 
well, you, you know, it's that thing. You're so, you're so many years old, you need this test, this test. I know what you're going to say, but uh-uh. No, closed. <laughs> Shut down. Mm-mm. You say, well, that's not a good example. Well, I'm paying you for you to tell me what I already know. Okay, move on. Y'all didn't like that, did you? Okay. So I'm in Acts chapter 7, verse, uh, let me start at 22. Can you read for me? Yep. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom Say of with the me, Egyptians. Say with me, learned. Learned. He was trained. Who, who are we talking about, Moses? Moses, right? Trained in all the what? 40 years trained. Now, don't you think that's a, that's a pretty decent time to be under somebody's tutelage for 40 years? Right? But that don't mean you're anointed to bring God's people out just because you've been trained in Egypt. He's educated, but he has no experience at deliverance. Well, he does. But I don't think that's going to convince nobody. Murder. <laughs> right? Keep reading. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians uh -huh. and was mighty in words and in deeds. He was what? Mighty in words and in deeds. He said he was mighty in words. Well, a little bit later on, when God gets through with him, he says, I can't even talk. Don't ask, don't ask me nothing. <laughs> you, that's what the process will do to you. It'll make you go back and say, look, I don't want to want, I don't want to know nothing, be nothing. Don't ask me nothing. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So keep reading. And? And when he was full 40 years old. A full 40. It came into his heart That's to right. visit his brethren and the children of Israel. That's right. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. So somewhere in the 40-year Egyptian training, he knew he was called to this other people. So he goes out, right? So he knows he's anointed and set apart for something. He doesn't know, he doesn't know the particulars of how this is going to happen. So an opportunity presents itself. What? He sees somebody in a scuffle. And what does he do? Intervenes. Because he's the deliverer. Right? And how does he intervene? He murders them. Right? And keep reading. And? For he supposed uh -oh. his brethren would understand suppose. how that God by his Ooh, hand it. would supposed. deliver them. But they understood not. Suppose. Do you know that this supposed is going to be Moses' problem all of his life? Suppose. So he has an expectation for the people to respond to him, respond to him in a certain way, and he just, he just don't get it when they don't do it. Huh? So I look at my children, you know, and I've got a bunch of them around them, and in some extent they are, they are a, a good reflection of me. And some of the stuff they do, I said, mm -mm, you didn't get that from me. That's your mama. <laughs> you learned that on the internet. I am not responsible for that behavior. Now in my house, different. But you've been gone. You've been gone as long, longer than you were in there. So whatever you're doing right now, you got on your own, buddy. So Gabriel calls me. Said, you know what Christian did? I, Dad, I can't believe it. Did I act? You were worse. You were worse, worse. I caught Christian the other night in the middle of the night, snuck down out of his bedroom and was biting that cake you made. And I said, well, what did he say? He said it was good. <laughs> yeah, he said, Christian, what are you doing up in here in the middle of the night? He said, I wanted some cake. So I had to remind him. I said, remember the day you and your buddies was over at the house and we had bought this food because we had people coming and you and your buddies got up in the middle of the night and cooked it all while we were sleeping? Rem do you remember? Yeah, same thing. <laughs> it, isn't it amazing how we forget stuff? Right? So I, I, I'm, I'm reminding him of this. You know, and this, and this is behavior. Where did you learn this behavior? Moses, where did you get this behavior 
that people should just respond to you because you're anointed. Now they're connecting your deliverance anointing to murder. So why, why, why do you feel like they shouldn't be confused at all when you get up and talk? Hmm. Okay. Y'all still in the room? Numbers 20 is my last verse, okay? Then we'll stop. We'll get you back next week. Is that all right? I I will. Numbers 20. Yeah. So the children of Israel are in a place, and uh, they ain't got no water. Say with me, they ain't got no no water. And God gives Moses some very specific instructions. Verse 7, the Lord says unto Moses, Take the rod, gather the assembly together thou, your brother Aaron, and speak, speak to the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their be straight. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him to. God says, now look, just, just talk to it. <laughs> Come on, tell your neighbor, just, just talk to him. Just, yeah, soft words. Talk to the rock. <laughs> huh? You ever been in the heat of the iron man and said, come down, come down, come down off of, come down off of 13, come down, come on, five, four, come on, a little bit, come, come all the way down, come on, ah! come down, come down, come down, come down, come down. Quiet, quiet, quiet down. Right here, right here. My hearing's intact. Calm down. Calm down. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So God says, hey, Moses, I know the people are thirsty. I know they need some water. I know the animals need some water. All I need you to do is take the rod. You don't have to prove to them who you are. Take the rod. You and your brother Aaron, go out there in front of the congregation. Just talk to the rock. When you talk to the rock, the rock is going to give you some water. Nice. Isn't that nice? You know, that's what Tina said. We're going to do it easy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Turner. We're going to do this easy. Sometimes we do it rough. Right now we're going to do it easy. Just speak to the rock. <laughs> Just talk to the rock. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation before the rock, and he said unto them, here now, you rebels! <laughs> Must I fetch water out of this rock? That ain't what God said. You know, he would have used some other words in modern language. Right? Yeah. I mean, God didn't tell him to do all of this. And you know what God says to this? Moses, what is wrong with you, man? I'm not angry with these people. Why didn't you sanctify me in the eyes of the people? Now they think I'm mad at them. And you have misrepresented my intentions before the people. Guess what? You ain't getting into the promised land. It's your little nasty self. I mean, this was a big deal to God. I mean, for God to just go all the way there. You know what? You know how you have levels of discipline for your children? Time out. Time out in one hour. Time out half the day. You ain't getting nothing for three days. Right? So for God to go all the way to you're not getting to the promised land tells me this has been an issue all along. For God to be so drastic with the judgment saying you keep, repre- you keep misrepresenting me in front of these people. You want to call it deliverance? Now you're in the way of what I really want them to see. Don't you think that's a problem? So let me ask you, over the last two years, have you misrepresented God? Where it counts, when it mattered, did you misrepresent God's intent in conversations you were with people around you? You You don't have to answer me. Answer him. Have we? Have we caused people to just kind of question? 
God would do this? God said this? God acts like this? Huh? On your feet. <laughs> hmm. Father, here we are again. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for being too far away. So far, like Samson, we don't realize you have left. Hmm. So far that we don't realize our gig's not working. So far that we don't even discern that we're losing life. And it's dripping and leaking slowly. Too far away that in my conversation, I'm misrepresenting you. God, that I know that if, if I just acknowledge that I have fallen from a place, you'll put strength back in me. And you will restore me to the place from whence I'm fallen. So, God, right now, we're not trying to hide it or harbor it or deny it. We've dropped it, but we're not sure where we have dropped it. We're not sure what really sent us over the edge. But we've got enough faith today to say, like the son that left home, I will arise and go to my father's house. So today we get up. We get up from the place. We examine our heart and we're looking at what may have crept in. And we say to ourselves, we will arise and go to our Father's house. Hmm. Hmm. So God, as we are contemplating, considering, still not trying to give you a whole lot of excuses, but simply saying, it's me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Renew a right spirit within me. Then will I teach transgressors your ways. Hmm. God, we honor you. Hmm. For your faithfulness. You said if we confess it, you are faithful and just not only to forgive but to cleanse us. All in righteousness, we're thanking you, Lord, for the cleansing of your Holy Spirit now. <clears throat> Remove every stony thing in our heart. Every callous place. Yeah. You said no eye pitied us there. We were polluted in our own blood. And you saw us, and you said, live. Right, right, right. Hmm. God, we thank you that that eternal word, live, is causing broken pieces to come back together again. Yeah. Thank you for our time in your word. Thank you for allowing us to see what manner of man we were as we looked into the mirror. And when we leave, we won't forget what we are. 
We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.